wanted to talk to you about another thing, mm-hmm. and it has, has it's completely one of the one of the guests that I had uh, on the podcast, Kristen McKendry from uh, a few podcasts ago. Mm-hmm. She's like so spread out. She she writes in many many different genres, just like you have here. <laughs> okay, we we've talked about your political political nonfiction. Yes. Now you've written a what was it called? It's fiction. It's uh, inspirational fiction. Inspirational fiction. Okay. That's okay. It's titled "My Burden Is Light." I'm halfway through this one, and it's very, it's very touching. And now I don't know how it's going to end. So, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> if you want to spoil it, I don't know. I, I won't give it away. <laughs> don't give it away yet. I'm about, oh, well, probably about chapter. I'm about page 110 or so. Okay. okay. But this book, it's it's called "My Burden Is Light," and it's uh, just a brief. Brief synopsis: It's about uh, it's about these two twins. They grew up in the church, and they're 19 years old. One, of, uh, they're they're at missionary age, mm-hmm. and uh, it's actually about one of the brothers who comes out as being gay uh, in an LDS, mm-hmm. you know, an LDS uh, in an LDS family. Yes, uh, uh, one of the boys comes out as being gay, which is which is hard enough to begin with, but it's extremely hard in an LDS family. Uh, particularly and as it would be in probably in any in, in most christians homes mm-hmm. it would be hard to come out as as being gay um and so it's a it's a very it's an interesting story and uh it's uh it's it's very i must say it's very well written it's uh, Thank you. you know it's very it's easy to read and it's uh it's funny <laughs> in parts and it's uh you know but it's uh, it's very uh, it's emotional i find myself being very um I I, f- I feel the pain that, uh, mm-hmm. that this that this boy is going through. Good, you know that's Good. that's what I feel. And so I, I wanted to talk to you about it because it's 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 very fascinating. And now you are a human rights activist, mm-hmm. and uh, you talked on many of those human rights issues in, in in the context of homosexuality and and society's uh, way of of dealing with homosexual individuals. And and I uh, wanted to talk to you about that. Okay. Uh, first off. What gave you the idea to write this? Well, uh, the church has been talking about this topic a lot in the last couple of years. It has been, yeah. And I mentioned earlier that I was Young Men's President for two years in my previous in the branch I lived in in Whitehorse mm-hmm. and a year here. And during that time, I got to know a lot of the young men. And uh, in two years, I saw some entered the program, some left the program, and some were in for the whole time. And I grew to love these young men. If one of them, and none of them have, but if one of them came out as gay, would I then shun him? Would I hate him? Would I wish him ill? No, I would still love him uh, and want the best for him. Know that he's uh, got a tremendous challenge. I would do everything I could to encourage him to stay active and faithful to the church, uh, recognizing that that's very difficult. Uh, but as any other single member uh, living the, the laws of the, of the gospel. Uh, so I thought, let me make up somebody and put him through those struggles so that people who might not be open to the idea of someone being gay can kind of understand a little bit what it's like. Well, you do a good job. Just, it, thank you. I, I found that it was... Um... You know, I, I I don't know firsthand what it's like to to go through that, but I do mm-hmm. know people that have gone through it, mm-hmm. and everything that I've that I've heard from them, it's pretty accurate. You, you get it pretty good. And and I don't know what it's like either, but I, all of us in our life have experienced loneliness. We've experienced feelings of isolation and alienation. So so I kind of drew on that to create and plus talking to a couple of people uh, who did realize in their teen years that they were gay yeah and uh, and and lds as well or? no i didn't find anybody uh, i went online and okay did some looking okay uh, i didn't find anybody who was lds and gay but just uh one gentleman who is actually reviewed the book who was catholic mm-hmm. and as a teenager and he said this this is kind of what he experienced it's amazing um there's more people that have this, I, like, I don't know what the, the term the church uses, same-sex attraction or mm. gay. I don't know what the, mm. the, the word is. I, I think yeah. they, 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 they say same-sex attraction, be, and I think the reason why they, they say that is not to not to muddy it up or anything, but just mm-hmm. 
because uh, a lot of times when people say uh, the gay lifestyle, there's a whole other set of mm -hmm. thoughts that people may have about what mm -hmm. that means, mm -hmm. where it might not, where they don't mean that. Right. right? Yeah. Um, same sex attraction. Like, and actually your character in the book deals with that where, where he's, he's saying he's gay. He's not had any, uh, romantic relationship with anybody mm -hmm. at this point. He hasn't had any, uh, even experimentation with anyone. He just is attracted to the same sex, but, yeah. but immediately there's, uh, there's a, there's another character in the book that is so repulsed by, by his being gay all of those thoughts come to his mind. That's mm. that's disgusting. That's gross. That I'm that lifestyle is 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 um, an abomination. And when he says that lifestyle is an abomination, what lifestyle? He, right. he, didn't, he, he didn't. He's just, not doing anything. He's just a teenager. <laughs> right. He, he he hadn't kissed a boy. He hadn't right. done anything. And yeah. that was uh, quote you know of that lifestyle. And so I think that's why they're careful about to to distinguish it that way, mm -hmm. which sex. makes sense. Yeah, it makes lots. And you're you're far enough in the book, and I just want to make this clear. You're far enough in the book to know that the main character is determined to live the gospel all his life. He is. Yeah. He is. And 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 um, and I that this was um, this book may be a real eye opener for for some people. I've um, I've had to uh, think about this because I I know some people that are LDS and that are gay and and have to deal with everything that your that your character mm -hmm. is dealing with in this book. And and that's why I took a particular interest in reading it because it's you know that there's the whole you know struggling with there's simply no attraction to the opposite sex mm -hmm. that just can't help it mm -hmm. you know and 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 yet the accusation of you know that's sinful that's an abomination mm -hmm. that's unnatural that's all this and and that's that's from the I guess that's an old way of thinking that's an old school like you know uh, that that. I guess what it comes down to is the debate over: is it a choice, or is it right, right, mm -hmm. or is it uh, is it nature, or is it nurture, nurture mm -hmm. right? I I don't know, but what I do know is that everybody that I know that is gay, that I've asked, has told me that it was not a choice, that they did not choose this, and if they could choose, they wouldn't choose it. <laughs> and but, talk to heterosexual people, you know did. Did I choose at some point to be heterosexual? I just am, right? You know, so I didn't. So what? Right, what? you're, you're yeah. just being who you are, right? Right. So why why would it be different? And uh, and I've I've heard these people ask, uh, just like your character has asked, why God did you make me this way? Mm -hmm. This yeah. is so hard. I yeah. can't. You know, what do I do? I do know that. Um, just in it, just, it was a few years ago when I did some research on this, and I I didn't even know. I thought. For years, I mean, you know, even in young men's, you know, they would teach us that, you know, you know, you go to hell, <laughs> oh, yeah. homosexuals go to yeah. hell, and yeah. and all all of this stuff. And it wasn't until recently uh, I found a lot of. I think the whole church is is uh, in a lot of ways is awakening to the idea that, um, hey, we're whatever it is. I think I think the official position of the church is this: is that well, we don't know. There's a lot of things we don't mm -hmm. know, and that, that's right. a very good answer because because sure. yeah. it's true. I mean, how how can we how can anyone say, well, that's a sin and that's not right? Only God knows, mm -hmm. right? right? Okay, right. Um, you know, certainly, I'm, I'm not saying that there's there's acts like there are there are acts that are mm. heterosexual right. or homosexual are sin. Right. <laughs> okay, true. like yeah. but but not talking about the acts. I'm I'm not talking about the so the quote unquote gay lifestyle. I'm talking about the attraction. Mm -hmm. That if if you can't if you can't help it or you just simply have no attraction to the opposite sex, that that's uh, uh, that's just some that's just the way that you're made, mm -hmm. and that's 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 sort of your challenge, and that's a that's a very hard challenge. In, I'm sure it in, is in, in this uh, in our culture, age. yeah. Um, and so, uh, I like how you. I, I'm this book is very much for an LDS audience. Mm -hmm. You probably, I mean, you'll probably uh, get a lot out of it if you're not LDS. But just all of the, the extra pressures that are there that you would only get if you were LDS, mm -hmm. like the the pressure of, um, well, you're not going on a mission and you know not revealing right. it to, to right. not not saying to everybody that you're gay. It's only a certain key, mm -hmm. key people knew that mm -hmm. he was gay. 
yet people are saying, well, I wonder why you're not going on a mission. Right. Yeah. He must, you know, the, the assumption is, well, if you're not on a mission, you must be in some sort of transgression right. of some sort. Yeah. And at, at the beginning when his father asks him, when he tells his father, he's not going to, and he says, is there a young woman involved? Because that's the first thing they think, that he's not worthy for a mission. Yeah. And that's not the case at all. Yeah. Yeah. Th- th- there's a, you know, you bring up so many points that uh, bring up a lot of other, just culturally other, other points like um, uh, any young man, gay or not. If he's not on his mission and he's 20 years old, people are mm-hmm. looking at him with funny looks. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you should be on a mission. What right. are you doing here? Right, right. yeah. What's, don't you have a testimony? Right, yeah. Right, yeah. right. And so that, that's, there's, there's huge cultural pressure yeah. uh, in, in that sense. Very and, true. And so it brings up a lot of these, uh, th- th- I guess that's why th- this book is, uh, uh, it's hard to put down. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm always yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 do, I do recommend it. Uh, you know, if you're gay, I recommend it. And <laughs> if you're not gay, but you know someone who is, um, it's a real eye opener. I, I do recommend it to, to anybody who is, uh, who, who may be in a situation where you have a friend who's gay. If you're a youth and you, and you, and you have a, there's another youth that you know is gay, read the book. It is, uh, it's a real eye opener. I would also think any, any member who's hearing the church, the church has, has a new website about, they do, oh, yes. Says, and any member who's curious, well, you know, why is the church talking about this so much? What is this all about? This book might give them some insights. Yeah. The, actually, do, do you know, have you, I, I've seen the website. I haven't. I haven't, no, I've looked at it. You yeah. haven't looked at it too much. Okay. The, yeah, there, there is a website. It's, it's an official church website that's specifically, yeah, it's, it's specifically, it talks about issues, uh, homosexual mm-hmm. um, and it's not talking about how bad homosexuality is. Not at all. It's, ta- it's <laughs> talking about yeah. how important it is to love them, mm-hmm. how important it is to reach out. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, uh, I know with uh, with especially male homosexuals, the suicide rate is way, way mm-hmm. higher than in mm-hmm. heterosexual. Male LDS. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It's very sad. And, and just the, you know, uh, just being the, the, the bullying and the, and just growing up in in a faith culture, especially a faith culture that preaches against mm-hmm. homosexual behavior, and where marriage and family is so important, yeah, and that's everyone's goal. Yeah, yeah. if you're not, yeah, you must be a broken person if mm-hmm. if you can't marry in the temple and mm-hmm. have you know eternal eternal marriage. And yeah. that, that that's you know the, the, t- t- that kind of teaching. What would you say to that? I mean, that is something that that Mormons believe. We believe in eternal marriage. Mm-hmm. So. For someone who is homosexual, who is struggling with that question, will I ever have someone in this life or in the eternities? What is there for me? Well, we're we're told that people who don't have the opportunity here will at some point have the opportunity to have to be married. Mm-hmm. So I think it'll be taken care of in the eternities. So what uh, has been the response to, to um, your book? It has it hasn't sold particularly well. Um, it's been reviewed a few times on Goodreads and a. Uh, Christian woman who wasn't uh, LDS was one of the she read it and she said it was great and that it, every Christian should read it. Um, mm. So it was uh, this was the only one that I self published because uh, one LDS publisher one, one Deseret book turned it down. Uh, Cedar Fort told me they really really liked it, yeah. but they didn't know how they would market it. Uh, hey, not, Cedar Fort, that's a LDS LDS publisher. Yeah, okay. another LDS publisher. Um, Told me they thought they would lose customers if they if they they really liked it, but they thought they would lose customers. Yeah, isn't that interesting? There, there's still the, the 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 stigma. Yes, it's still there. Yeah. Right? It's unfortunate. Yeah, but it's changing. Yeah, maybe one day they will pick it up. Maybe you never know. Yeah, yeah. I I thought it was great, and so. Uh, anyway, I hope you you enjoy the ending. <laughs> okay, I'm getting to there. Good, <laughs> Bob Fantina. Thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast. Uh, for sharing with us your books, Empire, Racism, and Genocide, A History of U.S. Foreign Policy, and also uh, My Burden is Light. Uh, Can you tell us where your website is? It's robertfantina.com. Excellent. I'll put a link on my website as well. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Greatly enjoyed it. This has been another episode of Interesting Canadian Mormons. To participate in the discussion for this episode or to subscribe to the podcast, please visit us at interestingcanadianmormons.com. You can also find us in the iTunes store. 
Thanks for listening. 